Welcome to this video on Model View Controller. This is a programming methodology that ensures that you create the code in the correct way. That's not correct as in you will do it this way. That's correct as in you'll make your life a lot easier. Let's start at the beginning. What is this model? What is the view? What's a controller? Well the model is the data that your program will use. It's divided into classes to make it a lot easier to program. So you have separate blocks for each type of thing that you're going to create. The view is what the user sees. It's the user interface. In Visual Basic these are the forms and the controls that go on those forms. In Java this is what happens in the JFrame constructor where you put the text boxes and labels and whatever else on the, onto the frame. And the controller, well this is the code that's the logic of the program. This is the programming bit. And this happens in functions and subroutines. Well, I'm not entirely enamoured with the term model view controller. I think it's confusing. A much better definition would be data, user interface and code. But that doesn't make nearly as nice an acronym. All it is is define your data first, then create the user interface and then get down to the programming. So let's go through these steps one at a time. First of all design the classes. You create the UML diagram for the application. So you take each thing in your program and that becomes a class. In the code I'm going to show you in a minute we're going to look at a little program that calculates fees for students, for applicants really. Now this is a very simple program and in that program there is only a fees class but it would be quite easy to create a better version of the program that kept data on the institution, on the applicants, on the courses on offer, as well as the fees. Each of these things would become a class in their own right. And each class will have its own attributes, its variables, and its own methods, things that it can do. And I'll show you that when we get to the code bit. The second step is to create the user interface. Now you know what data is needed, you can design the screens that you'll need. If you're converting from a paper-based system, then the look of your screens would ideally look like the forms that the user already knows and uses. That'll help the user later on. And there's a whole science behind creating user interfaces. It's not as simple as slapping a few controls onto a form. The third step is the, is the coding. You can now knit the classes and the user interface together. This is the programming part and it comes last, not first. Most people start programming by thinking about oh I need this on the screen and I need that and then I've got to write this bit of code and no. Get the data sorted, get the user interface sorted and then worry about the code that you're going to create. You start by creating the classes, then create the user interface and finally write the logic into the methods. Now let's have a look at the code that you might produce. How would you go about doing this? Well first of all you create the class. Here's a fees class. I start off with the fees information that this class will need for any of its methods. So these are static and I'm going to have a string variable that holds the name of the applicant a boolean variable that says whether they're a home or overseas student and an integer variable that says how many courses they're going to take. The constructor for this class takes in the name that whether the home 
button has been clicked and the number of courses as an integer and it takes these and sets them into whichever variables it wants to use in this case name home and courses and I'm going to have a method called set name that ensures the name is in the correct format a capital letter for the first letter and then all other letters being lower case the home button can only be true or false I don't need to do any checking there but with the courses well users are users and someone's going to enter minus five just to see what happens so I need to check the name and the set courses in this class the name here is going to be turned into all lowercase letters to start with and then I'm going to take the first letter and turn that into uppercase and then I'm going to have all the other letters added on to the end. Ar arrays in Java start with zero so I'm taking the zeroth letter taking one letter of it and turning that into uppercase and then I'm taking whatever's left of the string from letter number one which you and I would think of as the second letter and adding that on the end just to show you that, that, that that's worked I've got a print uh, system out println that will print out the name in its modified format and you'll see that in a moment I then return the name to the program that comes in here and this variable name now is in the correct format set courses well here I'm taking in the integer C and I'm checking whether C is less than zero if it is less than zero I say it's now zero so the user enters minus five they'll actually end up having selected zero courses and I return this to here so zero would go into the number of courses field and finally I'm going to calculate the fee now obviously people called Wix are too inferior to be able to have a proper education so in into so as to entice them into education I'm going to say that anybody called Wix pays zero fees however for everybody else well let's check whether they're a home student if they're a home student the home fee times the number of courses they take will be the fees that they're going to be asked to pay if they're not a home student then they must be an overseas student and overseas students will have to pay the overseas fee times the number of courses that they are taking let's see this program in action it asks for the family name I'm going to start off by using Wix I'm going to say Wix is a home student and Wix is going to take three courses because my name is Wix it says I don't have to pay any fees but you'll see down here from the output window that it's changed my lowercase w to an uppercase one the name is now in the correct format should I want to use it in some other part of the program if I change my name to something that is far further up the uh, evolutionary tree say Walshaw and I submit those details well then I'd have to pay £1,800 if I click the overseas button and press submit I'd have to pay £6,000 as an overseas student I can clear all the fields and everything will work now let's see what we do with this class here I'm setting up the class I don't worry about uh, all the program around it 
I just worry about setting up the data and making it work in the way I want it to work. I can then set up the user interface. So I can create the controls. I can add those controls to the form and set any action listeners that are needed. And then finally I get down to some code. If the user clicks the submit button I'm going to check whether the submit button has been clicked by looking at the event source. If they've pressed the submit button I'm going to set up a decimal format that shows me the pounds values. I'm going to take the name that was entered into the family name text field and put that into name. I'm going to see whether the radio button home is selected. That will either be true or false, so that's boolean. I'm going to look at the text field number of courses, get the text out of that and turn it into an integer. That goes into the courses variable. Now I can create a new class, an instance of this class, called Fees. Fees is a new instance and it uses the constructor with name, home and courses that I've just got from the information that the user supplied when they ran the program. I now can calculate the fees due by going to fees, this instance of the fees class, and using the method calc fees. Calc fees will return an integer value, a double value really, and put it into fees due. And that then gets put into the text fees uh, control, formatted in the correct way. Now if the user presses the clear button, the text fields are merely set to be empty. That's how the program should be written. We create the class first. We then worry about the user interface. And then finally we get down to working out what we want the program to do. Creating the code. That's the professional way to work.